Welcome to the Practicing Integrative and Whole Health podcast, where leaders talk about why practicing integrative and whole health care matters. We're tackling topics and ideas about how to make it the norm by transforming systems and the health and well-being of people and communities in America. I'm your host, John McKenzie. I'm the Executive Director of the Division of Academic Innovation for the University of North Texas Health Science Center in Fort Worth, Texas, also known as HSC. HSC is the jointly accredited provider for the inaugural Bringing Whole Health to Life Conference, taking place October 25th to 27th, 2024, which is led by the Academy of Integrative Health and Medicine, also known as AIHM. Today, we are joined by two passionate game changers, Dr. Tracy Gaudet and John Skarinj. With decades of leadership in whole health, Tracy is a board-certified obstetrician-gynecologist and the recipient of many accolades, including being named in the top 25 women in healthcare by Modern Healthcare Magazine and one of 11 Women Who Shaped the World by Shape Magazine. She was featured as a game changer in Fortune Magazine. Today, she is the co-founder of Cornerstone Collaboration for Societal Change. Prior to this, she served as the founding executive director of the Whole Health Institute, and she was also the founding executive director of the Veterans Health Administration's National Office of Patient-Centered Care and Cultural Transformation. This office led VHA's transformation to whole health that is now being implemented nationally. And Dr. John Skarinj, who is a chiropractor by training, is an educator, author, and advocate for healthcare transformation, and president and CEO of Southern California University of Health Sciences, where he has led an historic institutional transformation of diversifying programs, more than doubling enrollment, and implementing a groundbreaking whole health approach to healthcare education. He has provided leadership to countless organizations, including the Academic Collaborative for Integrative Health, the American Chiropractic Board of Sports Physicians, the World Federation of Chinese Medicine Societies, and the Northwest Commission for Colleges and Universities. His contributions to research and literature are also wide-ranging, having served as the associate editor for the Journal of Sports Chiropractic and Rehabilitation on the editorial and advisory board of Manual Therapy and publishing numerous articles in a range of scholarly journals and textbooks. Welcome to you both. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, It's nice to meet you and um, Truly honored to share this session with Tracy. So thank you for the invitation. <laughs> That's me, Joel John. And I'm honored to share it with both of you as well. So, you know, let's let's jump right in. And we, we shared some of your bio and, and background just now. But uh, let's start with John first. John, can you tell us a bit about your story? How did you get started in your healthcare career? And what inspired you to practice integrative and whole health? Well, um, bear with me. I'm going to go back to... Um, my, my youth and my high school days where my brothers and I uh, were student athletes uh, through high school and college. And I became a teacher and athletic coach. And I always had uh, an interest in, you know, diagnosing and treating and was kind of the de facto athletic trainer at our high school. Back then, we didn't hire athletic trainers. Um, and um, I entered chiropractic to work with athletes. And if you think about it, um, the whole health concept really integrate well with with sports medicine. Um, You want to learn about the athlete's purpose and goals. And um, we use all the resources um, uh, to improve performance. You have nutrition, appropriate rest and sleep. Uh, latest in movement science, sports psychology, concepts of active breast, right, uh, um, which maintains movement. So um, we also had integrated health teams, right, where the sports community were early adapters, uh, you know, including chiropractors, massage therapists, etc. And if you think about it, systems were built uh, around the athlete's purpose, right? Uh, professional sports team, they have a whole system and, and teams to work. Um, uh, college and universities have their sports medicine and amateur athletes. When you look at uh, the Olympic Training Center and the national governing bodies, they have these systems built around uh, the health uh, and performance of athletes. Um, so early in my clinical career, this paradigm was central to my professional development. Uh, we didn't call it whole health, 
Um, but I did carry the, these principles into my my higher ed career. Thank you, John. And and Tracy, the same question for you. What's your background? Yeah. What's your story? How did you get started in healthcare? And what inspired you to go down this path? Oh, thanks, John. And I just love following John's cringe. It's hard having two Johns here, but oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I I also had a non-traditional path, um, which I think is common for people that are now in this field. So I was um went to undergrad at Duke. And I was a psychology and sociology undergrad, and I was always drawn to the healing professions for reasons I'm not really sure. I didn't have any life event or nobody in my family was in medicine, but I I just intrinsically knew I wanted to be in the world of health or healing or medicine. And I wasn't exactly sure what that looked like. And, you know, I laughingly say, but it's true. Once I got to Duke and I met all the pre-med students, I was like, okay, that is not my tribe. (laughs) I mean, honestly, I don't mean to, you know, but at least at Duke, at that point in time, the pre-med folks were the most like hardcore, inhumane, (laughs) competitive, cutthroat people. And I was like that, okay, I'm psychology, I'm sociology. I like connecting with the heart and the soul. Not my path. Um, And long story, a little short, I thought, well, what do I love? I love bridging science to the human experience. Um, I just, and I still to this day love doing that bridging. Um, And so I looked into genetic counseling, which was a great field to do that, you know, um, to really translate what the science means to a person's life and their journey. And then I met with a bunch of genetic counselor folks at UNC and they were great. And they said, look, you know, I was already wanting to try to transform health and how we think about it. And they advised me that if I could tolerate it, and they said it that way, if you can survive it, um, we would really suggest you do the MD thing because you will have a lot more clout, credibility, a bigger platform. And so that's what I did. And I had to go back and take my pre-med stuff. And um, I was like the outlier in med school. I'm like, how did I get in? You know, like I kept waiting for somebody to tap me on the shoulder and say, did we say we let you in? Um, but I managed to get through. I I, uh, I did well in the clinical part because that was the human piece, you know. And then after medical school, I thought, well, now what do I do? Because there isn't anything that really aligns with this vision that John is sharing and that I'm sharing. And now we're talking about so I chose OBGYN because I really felt, and I think it was a good choice, that that um, unlike some other areas of medicine, it really is more holistically focused on pe- on women's lives and events in their lives um, and significant events in their lives. So I went that path. And then after my residency, I got I heard about this concept called integrated medicine. And I'd never heard of it before. And it was a newsletter from Andy Weil. And never heard of him before because I was doing residency. (laughs) I didn't get out much. Um, And when I I read the description, you guys, I was like, oh, my gosh, like this is what I care about. And so that gave me a path that really um, started this journey that was more aligned with this vision. And I long story, but I wanted to do the fellowship in Arizona. But I ended up through a very crazy um, set of circumstances being they asked me to be the medical director and helped create the program. And I remember emphasizing that, you know, I don't know anything about this. And and that turned out okay. It turned out okay because I think there was benefit when you're starting something really transformational, there's a lot of benefit to knowing that you don't know what it is. Like understanding you don't don't have the expertise. It's not about expertise. It's about gathering people who are like-minded and co-creating something new and transformational. So did that at Arizona, then I went to Duke and at Duke we really focused on, okay, if we educate people in a different paradigm, that's great. But if we don't also change the system in which they're working, it's just going to be frustrating and not productive. So at Duke, we really focused on, well, what does the system of care look like that aligns with this? And then the next question became, can you scale it? And what does it look like if you not just do it in a special you know, clinic or environment like we had at Duke, but bring it to kind of a more general population? And that um, opened the door for my work with the VA. Um, so long-winded, but that's that was my, I like the way you asked the question too, John, like what's your story? That's a great question. So that's my story, or at least a part of it. Thank you, Tracy. And, and you know, I think you also raised the million dollar question for our audience as well. Um, 
as as a new term like whole health emerges and it's not Mm -hmm. that new anymore but it's new ish Mm -hmm. uh and on the backs of a term like integrative medicine or integrative health um how do you see the difference what what is the difference between integrative health and and whole health because it's amazing even for those who are practicing in these spaces that's a difficult question sometimes to answer and so of course we're going to put the spotlight on you to try and answer that for our audience yeah oh for sure. Thank you. And and I appreciate the question because, you know, the good news about where we are nationally is that this is catching on. And the risk when something starts to catch on more broadly is that it gets diluted and people use the word, but they don't actually understand the transformation. And so that's the place in which we are, I, I think, nationally. So I really, re- I mean, it's exciting to see everybody picking up the term and it's a little frightening when when it's not clear that people understand what we're talking about. So thank you. And in the conference that's upcoming, it's a big focus is how, what do we really mean by whole health? I'm going to stitch back to John's introduction. And John, when you were sharing about sports and athletes, you said that the system is built around the athlete's purpose. And that's a great succinct way to think about whole health that the system of health, when it's transformed to whole health, is built around the person's sense of meaning and purpose and what matters most to them. And that flips the whole paradigm, right? So you could see that that really, I mean, my dream is that what if the purpose of healthcare is to really help people explore their sense of meaning and purpose and live their fullest life? And of course, to do that, you're going to hook their healthcare, their self-care, all of that is essential and integrative approaches are essential, but it flips the whole paradigm. And it is amazing how people will say, oh, like, you're not just telling me I quit, should quit smoking or change my diet because I don't, I don't want to have a heart attack in 20 years. You're actually talking to me about what matters most to me, helping me reconnect with that sense of meaning and purpose, and then align my health care and my self care for that intention. That's whole health, helping people live their fullest life by empowering them and equipping them with the skills they need to do that. And, you know, it's super rewarding. And it's interesting. There's a lot of data on meaning and people who have a higher sense of meaning and purpose, having longer over overall better health and longevity. And that's not even hooking it to self-care and healthcare. So I think in the end, yes, we get way better clinical outcomes at lower costs, but the key is not chasing those outcomes. The key is flipping that paradigm. I, I love that definition. I love that clarification. And I love that people are going to have the opportunity to learn more at the conference later yeah. this month. Absolutely. So, so John, the next question, we'll, we'll start with you this time. Sure. Uh, whole health obviously has applications in the clinic, but it also has applications in health education and in research, the educational enterprise of, of a university, right? Um, Can you tell us a bit about how your work today intersects with whole health? Uh, Yes, I'll I'll, I'll have the short answer to that to that question. Um, You know, Tracy just mentioned the difference, you know, between whole health and 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 uh, integrated medicine. And um, that's confusing across, you know, even within the integrated health community let alone a whole health community. And um, um, at SCU, I I think we've we've done a pretty good job of of integrating the complementary health professions uh, with mainstream medical approaches uh, with our programs and also within uh, our patient services that we we offer. Um, But that's only that that one small piece of, of whole health. So the transition for us, I think, is much easier um, than maybe another organization, you know, deeply grounded in uh, the disease model paradigm. And, um, you know, we're we're looking at, you know, what we can do uh, on a university system wide basis, not to just look at, um, you know, whole health towards a patient, uh, but also you know, those principles towards our community, the students, the faculty, the staff, et cetera. So. Wonderful. Thank you. And, and Tracy, really the same question for you. We, we've heard 
uh, a lot from your background and your experiences, but with the work that you're doing today, where do you find your work most inter intersects with whole health on a daily basis? Well, it's so great. Well, one thing is I've got gotten to have this amazing opportunity, thanks to John and Tamara at SCU, to work with them around creating a new doctorate in whole health transformation and creating. So it's really, it's been exciting because now the nation is calling for this transformation, which is amazing, right? The VA had a lot of data, great, exciting outcomes. So the VA has called on that to be um, just to, to be transformed across the whole health system you know, all of the VA, 9 million veterans. And now the nation, as John mentioned, through the National Academies report and the Surgeon General are also calling for this, which is super exciting. That led to the question of, well, who's going to lead it? We, Because all of the things that we're saying, this is a systems transformation. And so I became pretty obsessed and concerned, honestly, that without leaders who are trained in both really a deep understanding of what we're talking about when we say whole health and and what the system needs to be in order to support that vision and then thirdly how to actually drive transformational change it's a different kind of leadership than you know leading a, and it may I'm not saying it's better or worse it's just different skill set to lead transformation than to lead an established you know entity it's a unique skill set so we were thinking, hmm, you know, how is this going to work and who is going to take this over and help lead this nationally? At the same time, SCU was saying, maybe we need a doctorate in, in something in around whole health. Or, and so we put our minds together and birthed. I'm an obstetrician, so <laughs> <laughs> I love all the birthing metaphors. We birthed this thing and it just started. The first cohort just started. And, and it's super exciting to see the response of people that want to be leaders in this way. And, um, and the need is there is huge. So that's a huge focus of my work right now. And I'm super excited to be doing that. And Cornerstone Collaboration, which I co-founded, we are look, we work in partnership just like this with other institutions and efforts that are like-minded to see if we can help contribute to their work on their effort all leading to this, this movement. Incredible. And John, our, our next question is for you is, as a health professional and now president and CEO of SEU Health Sciences, can you tell us what, what is it that's critical to educating the next generation of health practitioners on how they actually go about practicing integrative and whole health? I think you need to emerge and change the system and emerge that student you know, uh, in this 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 whole health environment, and um, you know, if you look at the three main um, legs of the stool for whole health, uh, it's not just the clinical. You have the peers, the community, and then um, you're looking at the systems as well. Mm -hmm. So that was our aha moment. You know, we we realize, as I mentioned earlier, that the impact of whole health over our patients and wanted to leverage these concepts, you know, with our community, the students, faculty, and staff. Um, so we're rolling out some principles and standards of, um, you know, what it means to be a whole health university. And these principles uh, can be applied to transfer, transform the the mind, body, and spirit of any organization. Uh, but um, we're building a community where everyone understands and experiences whole health at every corner of the university. And like, you know, that pebble in a, in a pond causing those ripples across the uh, whole body of water, uh, we're hoping that uh, we're gonna make significant impact, you know, with one graduate, one patient, uh, one practice in, in one community at a time. Absolutely. That's the way to do it. You start local and it spreads. So, so Tracy, I think John's answer gives a perfect transition point as well uh, for the next question that I have for, have for you. So John just spoke about transforming the system and you and you, your work have also talked about transforming the system. Mm -hmm. uh, if there is a call for transforming the system and it's time Time now to do that and flip the scripts, as you've put it uh, before. What do you mean by flipping the scripts? How do you transform mm -hmm. the system? 
the areas of their self-care that they want to start to address and then help them with the skills and support they need to bring those changes to life. Now you have an army of people to drive a movement because they lived it, they are passionate, and they will drive the movement. So bottom-up strategies are essential, and it will not be sustainable in a system unless you also align it top-down. So how do you align the incentives? How do you align, how do you start to, like in the VA, we changed how, you know, the leadership was, how their performance was measured to include the whole health stuff. We changed how the benefits package worked. So the system was reimbursing for those, those approaches. So, and I know John has a similar strategy in the whole health university. Um, so bottom up and top down, uh, or we really won't do system transformation. And Tracy, a, a follow-up question for you. Um, we have so many varying health crises in this country, yeah. ranging from obesity to diabetes, to heart disease, to cancer, as, as you mentioned a minute ago, to all of these chronic conditions. What's the place of whole health in treating these bona fide needs and addressing these bona fide crises in this country? Oh, thanks, John. I think what's amazing about this approach is, while it is not, doesn't start from the disease or the chief complaint, it addresses the disease and the chief complaint, right? So what, how does that work? So, you know, and you can look at any of those topics that you mentioned and, and there's great evidence and research that says, you know what, behavior, lifestyle, you know, has a huge impact on everything from, I mean, the estimate is 90% of cardiovascular disease could be prevented with lifestyle. 90% of the number one killer of men and women in this country and globally. So where, where are we going wrong? Well, we're going wrong because we don't have a system that knows how to do that. So what happens when you approach the person's health and well-being through this paradigm, they begin to take on their health and well-being, including greater um, partnership with their health system. So it's not just, oh, self-care, now I have to do it all myself. It's also their engagement with health care. And that's what we found in the VA work. Uh, a significant increase in engagement in self-care, significant engagement increased in healthcare, and a greater engagement in people's lives. That's that's where you then start to see changes in mental health, changes in pain and opioid, changes in chronic conditions, obesity, diabetes, et cetera. So it's I, I appreciate that question because I think sometimes it gets lost that, oh yeah, oh, by the way, I like to say, Clinical outcomes get better and costs go down. Like, what about this do we not like? Absolutely right. Absolutely. And, and John, what would you add to that? How do you see whole health addressing these, these major crises in, in the country? Yeah, there's, you know, um, not a lot more, I'll, I'll, um, but I'll add a little bit more to what uh, Tracy mentioned. Um, like she said, there's no, no secret that we live in a, you know, a very un, unhealthy society, you know, but because of the complexities uh, that come with chronic conditions and a large part of society with multiple chronic conditions with individuals. Um, it's it's just daunting for a single specialty uh, to handle or a single practitioner, right? So uh, the system needs a, a team of providers, uh, patient advocates, uh, support systems uh, who will take a moment to just understand what really matters to that patient and get us all rowing in the same direction rather than haphazardly, everyone doesn't know what the other is doing. Uh, and you'll see those, those patient outcomes. But I, but I also think what, what, what Tracy uh, has led through the VA system, it's a closed system, but it's the largest, right? Healthcare delivery system we have. Um, there's other pockets you know, that we can uh, move in and, and influence. Uh, corporations, self, you know, self-insured uh, health, uh, you know, for their for their employees. Um, they want a healthy workforce. They want a, a, a satisfied and healthy workforce that extends beyond their health care, but to their family's uh, health care. So there's a great opportunity for whole health to, to make an impact in, in closed systems like that. Um, uh, communities um, as well. Um, you know, I think of 
like what we did. We we started, we have this integrated health and we're thinking, hey, we, we have a good transition into um, whole health because of uh, some of the similarities uh, to, to help with that. What about like blue zone communities, you know, where they are having uh, systems and the and the uh, municipalities built around that concept? Let's build on that, right? To to move into a little bit more with with the whole health concept. So, um, you know, I I agree. You you know, we we have the outcomes to improve patient, you know, uh, getting getting well. Uh, we're preventing waste, um, decreasing cost and practitioner burnout uh, people you know are mm-hmm. wanting to be practitioners and and feeling their purpose now rather than you know just marching people through the system right and dealing with paperwork um and and I think leading this to to high patient well-being um and a happy and healthy society absolutely agree and and a chicken in every pot I sound like a <laughs> politician. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and Tracy, as, as as we consider, you know, at some level, when it comes to systems level change, there's this, there's more questions than there are answers sometimes. How do we mm-hmm. go about this? What does implementation look like? What is what is needed is often not even settled. What do you think it will take to start to find the answers to how we mm-hmm. scale uh, integrative health and, and whole health at a national level? Well, I think we're at that precipice, right? I think um, the the circumstances are ideal um, for moving this into the broader community, in part because the current system is so broken. And I mean, the projections around costs and outcomes just keep getting worse and worse. So that allows people, I'm one of my favorite mantras is you can't have breakthroughs without breakdowns. So we are in a big breakdown around health and healthcare and have been for quite some time and it's only getting worse. So that allows the conditions to say, we got to do something radically different. So A, that's super important. And now I think, you know, there's, John was mentioning the community level. There have been decades of work at community level with what what my colleague calls high readiness communities who have been focused on health and well-being and, and the social determinants and the broader community pieces. And so we have that movement, if you will, and we have this whole health movement. And I think the opportunity now, what I would like to see happen is the, the next phase is identifying several of those high readiness communities and bringing the whole health paradigm and expertise to them and p- together partnering in that grassroots bottom up way. How does this work in a community? Like John said, a, a general community that has the employers at the table, that has the health systems at the table, that has the churches and the synagogues and you know the community coming together saying, we wanna improve the health and well-being of our community. And we want to learn from what's happened so far. What does that look like? And how do we implement that and get outcomes for that? Much like we did in the VA in the earlier days of saying, okay, we don't really know exactly how this is going to work, but we're going to learn by co-creating this together and for the nation. So that is what I'm advocating for as a next step is really saying, all right, we got to take this on. We have to begin to learn together and implement this at a community level and hopefully different kinds of communities, rural and urban, et cetera, and really learn how it can be then, then create the tools and the processes that any community can take and make their own. That's my vision. Absolutely. And, and as we come to a close, I have one last question for both of you. And, and let's, let's go with John first on this one. What do you hope that people take away from this conference that they can begin to practice in their own home clinics and hospitals and within their communities. I'll be speaking on SEU's uh, journey um, to become a whole health university by by taking those building blocks of whole health and patient care and, and applying them to a university setting. But those you know who are attending them not involved in direct patient care but are from organizations um, can still go away with information they can apply to, to any organization, not just a, a, a university or health system setting. Um, because the program uh, is organized around, you know, those three, you know, pillars of, of whole health, clinical, peer and community, and then systems and, and those concepts. So 
Um, I think it's a, going to be an exciting program. And I think uh, no matter who you are, uh, direct patient care, clinician, uh, administrator, educator, I think you'll, you'll, go, you'll go away with something that you can apply. Absolutely. And Tracy, same question for you. What do you hope uh, takeaways are? Yeah, of course, I agree with everything John said. And I think, you know, it's exciting that it's the first annual whole health conference. And so, you know, AIHM has been doing fabulous conferences for a long, long time, but this is like a new horizon. And so um, we really have prioritized just what we've been talking about this hour. How do we really help people understand deeply um, what whole health is? And we've kind of organized that around personally. So we will be inviting people to have a personal experience, a little of their own exploration of meaning and purpose and self-care um, professionally. Okay, how do you bring that into your practice or your community? And then at a systems level, what do we need to change? And so I hope our hope is that people will leave there with their own hearts and souls being touched and with a new passion and understanding and some tangible practical things they can do back in their environment when they head home on Monday. What a great conversation about why whole health matters. Thank you both again for sharing your passion and your minds with us. And we hope you, our listeners and our viewers will join them at the Bringing Whole Health to Life conference. In fact, we are inviting you to register now and you'll receive 15% off the conference registration fee. If you scan the QR code at the end of this podcast, it will take you to the registration page. Enter the promo code WHOLEHEALTH24, all caps and no spaces, and complete the information. For those who are listening and not watching today's podcast, go to AIHMConference.org and enter the promo code we just mentioned. We hope to see you there. And that's a wrap for our episode today. I hope you found this conversation to be as inspiring as I have. Again, John and Tracy, thank you for giving us your time and for all that you are doing to make this world a better, whole, and healthy place. Thanks so much. Thank you.